unite together in prayer this morning. Our Father in heaven, we come into your presence again this morning, and we thank thee that though worshipping from our scattered homes, we can unite together at the throne of grace. And Lord, we bow and we bless thee today for all that the Lord Jesus means to us, that to those who believe he is precious. We thank thee that he is indeed the bright and morning star, even in the darkness of this world. We thank thee that he is the one who is sweeter than honey, the one Lord who is almighty. And above all, we bless thee that thou art the one who is our saviour. We bow and we give thee thanks again for Calvary. We thank you for the precious blood that the Lord Jesus shed on the cross, that we might be forgiven. We thank you, O God, again that he gave himself for our sins. And today, Lord, we lift our hearts and we worship thee for all that thou art, and, O God, for all that thou hast wrought in our lives. And we say with one of old to bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name who forgivest all thine iniquities. And Lord, we bless thee for that. We thank you, Lord, that our sins, which were many, have all been forgiven. And today, Lord, we come before thee to worship thee, but, O oh God, to seek your face for our nation, for our land, for our church, and for ourselves. We pray, O oh God, that you will remember our land today and have mercy upon it. We pray, O oh God, that you will deliver it from this a pestilence of COVID that is sweeping across our nation. That, Lord, that man has no answer for, and man cannot control. And yet, O oh God, today we thank Thee that Thou art the mighty God, and we just pray that You might step in and bring to an end this pandemic that's across our land. Deliver us, O oh God, we pray, from this affliction. We pray that, Lord, for our leaders, that you will give them wisdom. We pray you'll give them discernment. And, O oh God, above all, we pray that you will give them a heart to call upon God and to seek thee for deliverance in our hour of need. Lord, we just pray for our nation that, Lord, you'll bring us to repentance. We acknowledge, Lord, our land has sinned against thee. We've turned against thee. We've defied thy laws as a nation. And, O oh, gracious Father, we pray that thou wilt bring true and genuine repentance. Give a heart to seek after God to the people of this nation and this land, we pray. And, Lord, we pray that even to us as believers and as your children and to the church, come with reviving and quickening power. Breathe upon us, Lord, from heaven. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Promise of the Father given. Send us, Lord, a Pentecost. And we pray that, Lord, to the people of God in these days, that there may be a, a renewing, Lord of Spirit, there may be a reviving and a quickening, and that thou wilt revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee. We do ask today that you will remember our many friends that are laid aside in illness. Be with them, we pray, in care homes and hospitals, in their own home. We pray that, Lord, you'll just ease the suffering. We pray that, Lord, you'll give encouragement where there's discouragement. Give a gracious sense of the presence of God. And, Lord, we pray that this day may they might recognize it as the Lord's day and that it might be a day of great blessing and great uplift to their soul and to their spirit. And, Father, for all of us today, as we unite, Lord, to worship thee, as we come, Lord, to listen to thy word, uh, even though, Lord, on a different format, we just say with one of old, Come, Jesus, Lord, with holy fire. Come in my quickened heart, inspire, cleansed in thy precious blood. Now to my soul thyself reveal. Thy mighty working let me feel, since I am born of God. And we pray that we might feel that mighty working of the Spirit of God in our lives today and that thou wilt meet with us where we are. Bless thy word, the one who brings it. May he know the anointing and the help of God. We pray that thy word might have that sharp cutting edge to our heart. Lord, that you will speak to our need, 
that you will encourage us, you will challenge us, and you will bless us. And in these days, we pray that you will keep us in safety, keep us in health, keep us, Lord, bright for God. And Lord, in the darkness that's around us, make us to be lights in this world. Lord, in all the uh, despair that men are feeling, we thank thee that thou art a God of hope, and we pray that thou wilt indeed give hope to every heart, for we ask it in the Saviour's precious name. Amen. Psalm chapter 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins, let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Now over a number of years uh, we have begun uh, the year by looking at the texts of Scripture and the calendar that we have chosen for uh, the, that year. And this year uh, we have taken uh, the theme of God being our strength. Uh, the first text that we looked at last week was from Exodus chapter 15 and in verse 2, the Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. The second of the texts on the calendar this year is taken from uh, Psalm 19 and in verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. And I want us to look at that text of Scripture and this uh, beautiful psalm this morning as we turn our thoughts to the Word of God. But before we do that, can we bow please for a moment in prayer and ask again for the Lord's help. Our loving Father, we do thank you for this opportunity of opening the Word of God. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit who can open our understanding. We pray, dear Father, that you will take your own Word and minister to the need of our hearts. We know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live. Thy Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we recognize, dear Father, as we depend upon you, that you will feed us and that you will strengthen us, uh, Father, by and through your word. So, Lord, help us, I pray. Father, help me, I ask in Jesus' name, that I might know the help of the Spirit of God, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the amazing things and wonderful things and thrilling things as we come uh, to consider the goodness of God and the greatness of God is that the God is God who reveals himself. We don't have to try to uh, figure out God speaks to us. God reveals himself to us. And so we find in uh, this psalm three ways in which God reveals himself to us. Uh, we see God in creation. Uh, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Uh, God reveals himself to us uh, in creation. 
and the beauty of his creation. Uh, we find this Paul writes in Romans in chapter 1, because that which may be known of, of, of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things uh, that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. God reveals himself in creation. His eternal power and Godhead are revealed in creation. Even in uh, the, the, the psalmist's time, whenever they didn't have uh, the technology, the, the uh, telescopes and all of the things that are available to us today to, to, to study and consider the, the vastness of God's creation. Uh, we recognize that uh, Paul and, and uh, David uh, could still see clearly and understand uh, the, the indisputable evidence of the majesty uh, of the Creator who uh, is eternal and, and omnipotent in power and majesty and glory, His eternal nature, uh, His universe. He, he who made the stars also is vastly greater than uh, the vastness of, of His creation. Uh, we recognize that uh, He is bigger than all that He has created. Uh, he is more majestic than all that he has made. And we find that God reveals himself uh, to us. The heavens declare the glory of God. Uh, and God speaks in clear, understandable language. It's not just a noise uh, that we know there's something out there. But God speaks to us day on to day. He uttereth uh, speech night unto night. He uh, showeth knowledge. There is no speech in our language where their voice is not heard. We recognize God speaks day after day. God reveals himself night after night. We see the beauty of God's creation and it speaks to us of the majesty and the power of God. We find the psalmist uh, uses poetic language here as he speaks about uh, the, the, the lines have gone out through the earth and the uh, words unto the end of the world. Uh, in them hath he set the, the, a tabernacle for the sun, uh, which is as a bridegroom coming out uh, of his chamber and rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. What a beautiful picture in, in very poetic language. He pictures the sun going into a tent and then reappearing every new morning, every new day and, and, and almost stretching himself and, and, and running across the sky as a strong man to run a race. Very pictorial language. His going forth is from the ends of the heavens and the circle of them and to the end of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat. Recognize that in God's creation, there, there is no place where we can hide from the voice of God and from the eye of God and for the greatness of God. And we find again the psalmist in Psalm 139, that beautiful psalm, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. And thou compassed my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there's not a word in my tongue, but lo, thou knowest it altogether. And thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Uh, 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 it is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? And whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there thy hand shall lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be a light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee. For the night shineth as the day, and the darkness as the light are both alike unto thee. 
For thou possessed my reins and hast covered me from my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. We recognize that, that there is evidence there that convinces us of the greatness of God. And there's no place that we can hide uh, his, his omnipresence, his omnipotent power, his, his majesty, his glory can be clearly seen uh, 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 in all of his creation. And whenever we see his handiwork, uh, it causes our hearts to sing. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. We recognize God reveals his greatness, his majesty, his power in his creation. The heavens declare the glory of God. And we recognize as we read this psalm that God reveals himself to us in his creation. Whether it's in the minutest particle of his creation or the vastness of the, of the space and, and, and our galaxies and our universe. The beauty of God's creation reveals something of the majesty and the power of God. God reveals himself in creation but well, then the psalmist goes on uh, to remind us that God reveals himself to us in the scriptures. Uh, we recognize not only in the, as in the first uh, six verses uh, where he speaks about God in creation. Uh, then we find uh, from verse 7 uh, through uh, speaks about uh, God in the scriptures. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Uh, the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. And so we find that there are six titles for the scripture and six attributes that are revealed to us about God in the scripture and, and six effects upon the heart of those who, who God reveals himself uh, uh, to in the scripture. And so we find he talks about the law of the Lord and the testimony of the Lord and the statutes of the Lord and the commandments of the Lord and the fear of the Lord and the judgment of the Lord. And we recognize that, that every one of these titles gives us something more about the greatness of God and how God reveals himself to us. And the law of the Lord, the Torah, uh, the picture there is of a shaft of light that, that flashes into the darkness and penetrates into the deepest darkness of this world. The law of the Lord. Uh, we, we, we recognize that God reveals himself in creation and his majesty uh, and in his might and in his goodness and his glory. But God reveals himself in the scripture uh, uh, in his grace and in his kindness and in his mercy and in his love. And, and so we find that God, what we cannot uh, see in, in creation, God reveals in his word. His mercy towards us, his kindness, his love, uh, his goodness, his grace towards us. And the law of the Lord, the goodness of God that sets down the boundaries for us. We recognize that in this world, uh, children growing up need boundaries. Uh, if a child tells the parents uh, they don't want to do this and they don't want to do that and, and they're the ones that, that set the boundaries, well then there's going to be confusion. There needs to be the wise counsel and guidance of a, of a, a loving parent uh, to, to put boundaries in and say, yes, you have to do this and no, you can't do that. And, and there are laws and there are rules in a sense to protect and, and those rules are given and those laws are given for the protection, for, for the safety, to keep from dangers. The law of the Lord is perfect uh, and, and we recognize it is, it is complete. There is nothing lacking in God's standards that he gives to us. Uh, the, the, the light that he shines upon our path to keep us from dangers and from tragedies and making a mess of our lives and 
And so he tells us the law of the Lord is perfect. You can't add to it. There's nothing missing from it that is for our good. God sets down the boundaries. And we find that the effect of the law, this perfect law, is that it converteth the soul, exposes sin, it turns our feet from the path of destruction, has power to do what nothing else can do. We recognize that we we need the word of God, we need the light of God's law upon our lives to show us our lostness and our guilt and our shame. Uh, to see uh, the uh, defilement of our lives. Uh, we're thinking this morning uh, just uh, of the snow. And when the snow comes, uh, the, the, uh, years ago the, the ladies would have taken their washing and hung it out in the line. Uh, and, and they would have been proud of how clean and how white uh, their, their, their clothes were. But then when the snow came, they quickly took them in because in the light of the snow, they didn't look just so clean. And we recognize it is God's law that shows us the defilement of our hearts and shows us uh, the things that are wrong and, and points us to the one who can make all things new. We find that the law of the Lord is perfect. Uh, it converted the soul. It turns us from the wrong way. It, it points us to the right way. It shows us our failures. It shows us our need and, and calls us uh, to recognize uh, our need before God. And then he talks about the testimonies of the Lord. Uh, the testimonies of God. Uh, that uh, we recognize the law reveals our sin, but the testimonies reveal his grace. Uh, the testimony of the Lord, the, uh, the testimony of God testifies to God's love and, and God's provision of salvation to those who are unworthy. We have sinned, we have fallen short of the glory of God, and yet God testifies of his mercy towards us. And he reveals himself. The testimonies of, of the Lord are sure. Uh, they, the, the, there's a beautiful picture here. Uh, the, the word sure means to stay, to sustain, to support. Uh, to support uh, with the arm to carry the child. And we recognize that, uh, that uh, here we are and, and we're, we're sinners. Uh, we, we've gone astray and the word of God shows us, the law of God reveals to us that we are separated from God, that we're sinners uh, by nature and by practice. Uh, but the testimony of God comes to, to, to put his arm, as it were, around us. Uh, and, and, and it maketh wise the simple. Uh, what a beautiful picture. Uh, we, uh, we in our darkness and, and in our blindness and on our sin, our stumbling towards a precipice. And, and the law of God is a beacon of light that shows to us the, the danger that lies before us. But God reveals his arms stretched out and calling us uh, to, to a place of safety where, where instead of our foolishness, uh, we, we are turned in and, and we find wisdom and we find instruction in the testimony of the Lord and the statutes of the Lord and the statutes of the Lord are right rejoicing the heart of uh, the, the heart uh, the, the, the statutes of the, uh, the will of God is, is written in the heart uh, we, we find in the Psalms again in Psalm 119 I will meditate on thy precepts uh, I have respect unto thy ways. The, the, the precepts are, 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 the statutes are the law of God written on our hearts. We, we find the amazing grace of God. That even though we are sinners and condemned by the law, uh, we recognize that God's light shines upon our path to show us the danger. And God's arm is stretched out in his testimony that he loves us and he cares for us. And, and he wants to bring us into the safety of the fold. And, and his statutes uh, show us his will. 
Uh, we find that in Ezekiel chapter 36, he says, I will sprinkle uh, clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart uh, also will I uh, give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit in you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgment and do them. We sing with the hymn writer, what a wonderful change has been wrought in my life since Jesus came into my heart. When God reveals himself in the person of Jesus Christ, the one who came into this world to save sinners and he shows us in the law where we have failed. He shows us in his word and his testimony of his care and his provision for us. As a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them. And he comes to save. He came into this world to save sinners. And he comes by the transforming power of his spirit to put, give us a new heart and a new spirit and put his statutes, his law in our hearts. And, and uh, we find the statues of the Lord are right. Uh, we, we find the, uh, the picture there of, of right has been uh, a perfect balance. Uh, scales that are, that, that are, are perfect uh, and, and uh, a straight edge. That if you, if you want to, to mark a, a line, you need a straight edge to guide you. And if you want to weigh something, you need a, a faithful balance. And, and the statues, the ways of God are perfect. God's ways and God's word will guide us in truth and in righteousness. His word is faithful. And we find that it rejoiceth the heart. Uh, we, um, Father, I find we, we mark the, the, the effects of, of the statues of God. Uh, we, we mark the progress. Uh, uh, he who converts uh, 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 makes wise, but then he makes happy, as Spurgeon says. The truth uh, which makes the heart right uh, gives jo uh, joy uh, to the right heart. Uh, free grace brings a uh, heart joy. Earth burn mirth uh, dwells on the lips and flashes in the bodily powers. But uh, heavenly uh, delights satisfy the inner nature and fills the, the mental facil uh, facilities, uh, facilities uh, to the brim. God comes to the heart to know that you are right with God. And to know that, that God has stepped in and, and shown you the, uh, the, the errors of your way. And he has put his arm out and he has taken you by the hand. And he has led you to a place of repentance and, and trusting him. And he puts his love in your heart and his law in, in your heart. And, and he fills your heart with joy. Uh, we, and the commandments of the Lord are uh, uh, sure enlightening the eyes. Uh, we, we find that uh, the outflowing of a life that has changed the Lord. Uh, uh, whenever Paul, Saul of Tarsus uh, had that light that shone from heaven, uh, like the law of God that showed him that he was, uh, he was kicking against the prick, he was fighting against God. And, and when the hand of God revealed that I am Jesus, uh, the one who came to save, uh, Paul's uh, reaction was, what wilt thou have me to do? Uh, what wilt thou have me to do? And so uh, the Bible tells us, if you love me, keep my commandments. The commandments are pure, without mixture, holy. Uh, we find those verses in the, uh, the Songs of Solomon. Uh, Who is she that looketh forth in the morning, fair uh, as the moon, clear as the sun, terrible as an army of banners? And there is no mixture, no, no error, uh, no defilement, no stain, no pollution, no sin in it. The, uh, the, the testimony, the commandments of God, the word of God, uh, and uh, uh, the effects are, uh, the, uh, uh, to the pure, all things are pure. We find that in Matthew chapter 5, it says, Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Uh, the fear of the Lord, that reverence, 
of the unchanging God. The God who hated sin in the past is the God who hates sin today. He is the unchanging. And there's a sense in which when we see the goodness of God, God reveals himself. We tremble at his word. We reverence him. We recognize who he is. The fear of the Lord is clean. We recognize that God is one uh, who uh, delivers and uh, tells us the fear of the Lord is con- uh, clean, enduring forever. God is the one who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can trust Him. We can lean upon Him. We can uh, depend upon Him. Uh, we find that the God of the Old Testament is the, is the God of the New Testament. Uh, he is the same God. This God is our God. And he will be our guide even unto death. The testimony of the Lord is true and righteous altogether. Uh, and the, uh, one, uh, we find that, that uh, the, the one before whom we will have to stand one day. The judgment uh, of the Lord. Uh, the judgments of the Lord are true. We recognize that he is just. And he is the justifier of the ungodly. The amazing grace of God. And that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. And and so he can lift us and, and save us and keep us. And we can stand before the judge of all the earth. Uh, We find in uh, in the life of Abraham when he was pleading uh, for for Lot. He said, be it far from thee after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked. uh, That the righteous should perish. uh, Be as the wicked. uh, Be it far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Uh, His judgments are true. Uh, We find that the glory of God is revealed to us in creation. But the goodness of God is revealed in his word. Uh, We find that uh, more to be desired than gold, much fine gold, sweeter also uh, than honey. And the honeycomb more, uh, moreover by them uh, thy servant is warned. And by the keeping of them there is great reward. We recognize that we can stand and we can look at the the glory of God in in the creation. But whenever we come to God, we bow before him. And our hearts are melted as we recognize who he is. He's the God who loved us and gave himself for us. God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so we come and we recognize uh, that that, uh, there is value in the word of God. Tremendous value that God reveals himself. God instructs us. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. And we know there's sweetness. There's promises. Uh, When we were guilty and lost. When we were hopeless. uh, And there was none to help. His voice came through the scriptures. Saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And we find great sweetness. There is wisdom. Uh, There is wisdom in his word. Uh, Moreover, by them the servant is warned how foolish we would be if it hadn't been that we have a faithful guide in in, in his word. uh, That that, uh, uh, we can pray like uh, the Lord has taught us. uh, Lead me not into temptation but deliver me from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory we recognize there is great reward there is great reward how can we speak of the reward of knowing the presence of God of God coming to us and taking us by the hand the God of glory stepping down into time and becoming the friend of sinners one who sticketh closer than a brother one who says I will never leave you nor forsake you what a wonderful God who reveals himself not only in creation but God who reveals himself in his word but then we find the final thing that in this passage of scripture tells us not only is God, does God reveal himself to us in creation and God reveal himself to us in the scripture but God reveals himself in the personal dealings with the soul of man uh, the, the word of God that God gives is a word of warning. And we find here in the, the latter part of this psalm that there are four steps uh, that lead to shipwreck. 
Oh, that men would listen to the warnings of the word of God. And so we find that he tells us here, God's dealing in the souls of men and women. He tells us there, moreover by his servant is warned. And in them there's great war. Who can understand his errors? Uh, who can who, keep back thy servant from presumptuous sin? Let not them have dominion over me. Uh, that, uh, uh, then shall I be upright uh, and shall be innocent of the great transgression. There are four steps uh, here that the psalmist warns us of. That, uh, we need to allow God to have dealings in our souls. Uh, he talks about errors. Errors, the only place in, in the scripture that it is used. Uh, committing uh, sin through uh, error. Uh, we recognize that, uh, as Jeremiah reminds us, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart and try the reins uh, to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. We recognize that, uh, that, that we cannot trust our own understanding. Uh, we need the wisdom of God. We need the word of God. And, and uh, we find here that the psalmist says, uh, who can understand his errors? Uh, we need the word of God. We need the light of God's revelation. We need to understand our, our own uh, folly and our own sinfulness and our own weakness. But he talks not only about uh, errors. We could, uh, if we wasn't for the word of God, how many errors? How many times we would have gone astray? How many times we would have made the wrong decisions? And done the wrong things in ignorance and in blindness? We need the, the guiding the hand of the word of God. But then he talks about cleanse me from secret faults. Uh, secret faults. Uh, while uh, we can sin in ignorance, uh, we recognize it can lead to sinning in secret. And, and he tells us here, cleanse me from secret faults. Why do we keep it secret? If we, if we don't know that it's wrong, we recognize here is a, another step. Uh, when, when men uh, uh, sin in ignorance and they don't listen to the warnings of the word of God, then they begin to sin in secret. And, and uh, it becomes then presumptuous sin. Uh, keep back thy servant from presumptuous sin. You, you think that because you've done something in ignorance and then you, 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 you continue to you do it in secret, that you think that you'll get away with it? And you presume that because uh, you haven't suffered judgment and because you haven't been found out, that, that, that somehow you can continue in this road and you presume uh, that you can get away with it. And we recognize here that uh, the, the word talks about uh, this presumptuous sin, uh, thinking that you can get away with it uh, in Psalm 119. The, the same word is uh, translated pride, uh, proud. Uh, that which is boiling, swelling, inflated, and proud and arrogant. And, and so we find that uh, God deals with the soul. He reveals uh, uh, the, the, the errors. He reveals the secret sins. He, he reveals the foolishness of presuming and the pride of presuming. And then the warning comes. Uh, let them not have dominion over me. Uh, uh, then shall I be upright and shall be innocent of the great transgression. We recognize uh, here are the steps. You begin by uh, presumptuous or you begin by uh, errors. And then it becomes secret sin. And then it becomes presumptuous. And then uh, there it becomes the shipwreck uh, where, where uh, it becomes the great transgression. Uh, uh, the, the evidence of, of foolishness uh, and uh, becomes slavery to, to the habits and the bondage of, of sin that was secret now has become uh, something that dominates and controls and the great uh, uh, shipwreck and we find uh, when Paul is writing in 1 Corinthians in chapter 9 and verse 27 keep, uh, but I keep my under my body and bring it into subjection lest by any means when I preach to others I myself become a castaway or a reprobate and we find here it is in the light of the word of God uh, the light of the word of God God reveals himself 
in creation, God reveals himself in his scripture, but God reveals himself in the warnings uh, that, that he brings about secret faults and presumptuous sin and the danger of making shipwreck of your life. And so uh, it is from that background that we have our text of scripture uh, where the psalmist prays. Uh, and, and dear friends, we can gaze upon the beauty of God's creation uh, we can uh, look into the word of God and see the wisdom and, and the wonder of God's grace and God's mercy. We can hear the warning, but if we do not heed the warning and if we do not apply our hearts and if we do not submit to the authority of the word of God, then we will surely make shipwreck of our lives. Uh, we will surely uh, end in tragedy and become reprobate. And so we find uh, that he is uh, not just the, uh, uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh, my strength and my redeemer. It is, here is the psalmist and he is having dealings in his own soul. It's not the God of creation out there. It's not the word of God that we can read. But it's my heart and my mouth. Uh, it's not just the words that I speak, but the very thoughts that I think. Uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, if you think, uh, if you, if, uh, uh, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper, uh, but, but uh, he that forsaketh, uh, confesseth and forsaketh shall have mercy. Uh, and he says, hey, uh, I want my heart to be right with God. Uh, he said, let uh, the word let there is, is, needs to be underlined in our lives. Let, uh, we need to yield our lives. We need to submit to God, the God of creation and the God of revelation and the God of mercy and the God of grace. We need to let the word. We, we need to recognize the price that was paid. Oh, my strength and my redeemer uh, in order that we might be delivered from sin and, and from folly and from secret faults and from presumptuous sin and making total shipwreck of our lives. Jesus had to die upon a cross. He had to redeem us by the shedding of his own blood. It cost him everything because of his love toward you. And you need to come to him and surrender your life to him recognizing that he is the one who loves you and he is the one who can lift you out of the miry clay. He is the one who can strengthen you. And, and, and the psalmist comes here before the God of revelation and the God of scripture and the God of grace. And he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. I want to be right with God. I want to be right with God. I want my words to be true words. No secret, no, no sham, no false, no defiled, no, no uh, corrupt, no filthy communication out of my mouth. I want my heart to be clean. It's only the blood of Jesus Christ that can cleanse from the sin. And so we submit to him, the one who is our redeemer and the one who is our strength. And, uh, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart and be uh, acceptable in thy sin to my strength and my Redeemer, my mouth and my heart uh, need him uh, to be my strength and my Redeemer day after day. Oh, may God help us in these days as we consider his word and that we might be those uh, who not only hear God speaking in creation and see God's revelation in his word, but allow God to deal with us in our own hearts until we come to the place of total surrender, uh, yielding all to him. May God help us. May God bless his word uh, to our hearts, even this morning.
We want to close uh, in prayer and just commit uh, God's word to our hearts this morning. Our loving Father, we thank you for your speaking voice. And Lord, we pray, dear Father, that we might not be just those who are hearers only, but we might be those who are doers of the word, that we might take our position at the feet of Jesus, bowing low before him, surrendering our life to him, allowing him uh, by his redeeming power to save from sin and to strengthen us to live our lives for his glory. Set your seal upon your word, we pray, and bless we ask for Jesus' sake. Amen.